was weary, sound asleep, unguarded, unprepared, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works thereof therein shall be burned up. Dear friends, the judgment of God will come with great destructions. The heavens and the earth will be destroyed by a coming flood of fire. This earth is not our permanent home. And the Lord wants us to see and understand the truth because if we would build, seek to build a permanent home upon this earth, we will be ultimately disappointed. Therefore, we are to take heed of God's word and be careful not to be hoodwinked by the gainsayers. What would they say? 2 Peter 3, verse 2 to 4, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own last and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. The word of God stands sure as we have memorized in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. It says here, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. When Moses obeyed the voice of God to confront Pharaoh, Pharaoh rejected his request to let his people go. Rather, we saw how Pharaoh increased the burden of his people, how he tormented them, with greater bondage by refusing them the materials and expecting them to produce the bricks needed for his building program. This unreasonable response discouraged the Israelites and the leaders of Israel. It is as if Moses and Aaron had suffered a setback. You recall last week, we saw how Aaron went back to God and said, Pharaoh did not hearken to any of our words, but he has become more and more stubborn. Is that surprising? Because the Lord had already prompted Moses to let him know that Pharaoh's heart will become stubborn and he will not let his people go. Dear friends, as we ponder the word of God and what he said to Moses before he sent him forth from the burning bush, the words of the Lord was once again rehearsed in the sight of Moses. For we can get discouraged when we see the storms that seem to be opposing the tide the movement of the Spirit of God. Do you get discouraged when you see the storms before you? When things seem to not go your way as we have planned? Well, you recall Moses knew already that Pharaoh will harden his heart. Dear friends, God is still on the throne. And he understood the response that the people of Israel will go through before they would finally be set free. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 4 and verse 21 to 23. Exodus chapter 4. And it said here, And the Lord said unto Moses, when thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh which I have put in thy hand, but I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. 
and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that, I may serve, that he may serve me, and if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Dear friends, when our Lord Jesus Christ tells us that the day of judgment is coming, in his coming he will not come as a lamb, but as a lion from the tribe of Judah, he will come as a judge. And he doesn't mean his word. While we live in the time of grace, it behooves us to repent of our sins before the time come when it is too late. God will be very merciful to Pharaoh. All the principalities and powers in high places, God will be long-suffering. His people will have to suffer because God is very merciful before he would judge Pharaoh. Many opportunities will be given him and the people of God who understood that we serve a long-suffering God, we don't want evil to come upon them. You don't want Pharaoh to experience the ultimate calamity of his waywardness. And therefore, God is long-suffering. He allowed Pharaoh to harden his heart. He allows us to see and go through a period of trial. This was what Moses was going through. It was a period of trial when God in his long-suffering gave time for Pharaoh to repent. Dear friends, we need to see things in God's perspective so that we will not be discomfited in the time of our trials. If you are Moses, you are the children of Israel, and you cry out to God, and it's, there seems to be no answer to your prayers, is God still not on the throne? Dear friends, let us be still and know that He is still God and He has our interest, all of our interest at hand. He knows our needs. Let us wait upon Him. And so it is for Moses to trust God after he suffered this setback from going that trip to meet Pharaoh, he's not to fear the face of Pharaoh. He's not to fear his court of mighty men. This episode that we have here is like the devotional time of Moses, where God renewed his strength by his promises and send him forth for the day's work. Do you renew yourself by waiting upon God so that you would rest in Him each day for the challenges that comes before you? Well, we say this in our, our weekly walking with God in the new year, how we need to take time to begin on the right footing, to spend time with God and to hide His Word in our hearts. It is said, half the knowledge is to know where to find it. But I lovingly say to you that the fullness of knowledge is to have it deeply ingrained in your heart. How do you wage a 
spiritual warfare only by the word of God and how can you do so unless the word of God rests upon the death of your very soul to guide it to instruct it and to direct it is God guiding you and I pray that the Lord would guide you in this new year as you would take time to meditate upon His Word. We have made orders for the read the Bible in one year, read through the Bible in one year book. Come forward if you like to have a copy. The two thoughts given to Moses, reassurance of God's promises, verse 1 to 9, and renewing of faith for service, verse 10 to 13. Reassurance of God's promises. How we need to be assured. How we need to stand firm upon the word of God. How we need to rest upon it in faith. How our faith must not waver. God has to assure Moses of his commitment to deliver Israel out of their bondage. Verse 1 of our text says, The Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I, what I will do to Pharaoh. God said to Moses, It is not him and his power, but it is God and his mighty working for with a strong hand shall, I, shall he let them go, and with a strong hand will he drive them out of his land. Why did God record the Exodus for us? It is for us to learn the commitment of our God for the good of our souls. We can trust him. We can wait upon Him without being discomforted to rest upon Him in the time of danger. As we sing in our hymn, God leads us along. How we need to put faith into action. How our faith needs to be undergirded by God's Word. The promises that God gives to us. God will speak at length, reminding Moses of his promises. And these promises dated back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and his forefathers. And for us, this book dates back to 1445 BC when God gave the word to Moses and he recorded the first five books Genesis, Exodus Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy 3,500 years ago all the promises that God gives us not nullified but will be fulfilled God is not slack concerning the fulfilling of his promises he does not lie he takes care of the affairs of His people. He takes care of the affairs of His church in the church age. Just as He did with the church in the wilderness, God knows. Will you trust Him? Will you put your faith in Him to know that He is still on the throne? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 17 to 19. Hebrews chapter 6. It says here, Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of His counsel, the unchangeableness of His word, confirm it 
by an oath, God Himself, He parted the animals and by the light walked through it to cut the covenant with Abraham that he will fulfill it over his dead body. That was the covenant that was given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ when he came and lived a perfect life and he sacrificed himself on the cross willingly for our sake to secure his church that the that hell the rages of hell shall not prevail against it showing unto us the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things what are these his promises he said to them 400 years later uh, earlier that he would give to the descendants of Abraham the land the promised land and now they are slaves in Egypt God is going to deliver them out of Egypt there is a plan that God has when he comes when they come out of Egypt God will give them at Mount Sinai the law the constitution of the nation and then God will bring them into the promised land and they will become a full-fledged nation this was the plan of God that they will be a witness amongst all the nations of the world to the living and true God just as his church today is a witness and God has commissioned us with a great commission to go into all nations and preach the gospel are you frightened because of what you see that seem to be so powerful ways of the enemies to thwart God's work well let us see with the eyes of faith Jesus says all power is given unto me in heaven and in hell in heaven and in earth and I will give it unto you and Jesus says I will go with you I will go with thee unto the end of the world the enemy will not prevail against you trust him that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie that we might have a strong consolation a strong consolation that you be not discouraged that you be not discomfited because you are the people of God and he takes care of you who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us we have fled to him Jesus Christ to be our refuge will we be discouraged because of what we hear because of what we see well Moses was discouraged the leaders of Israel were discouraged the people of Israel were discouraged but the Word of God will be fulfilled Israel will come out of the land of Egypt and they will become a nation as God has promised them the gates of hell shall not prevail against you which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which entered into that within the veil when Jesus died upon the cross he said it is finished and the veil in the temple 
that separates the holy place from the most holy place was torn into two to show us indeed that through the sacrifice of Christ we can enter into the very sanctum of God to the very throne of grace through Christ that was the picture of the sacrificial the Davidical sacrificial system that God has inaugurated that God will inaugurate through the nation of Israel when they were in the wilderness his promises will be fulfilled to the jot and tittle Jesus says for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass away one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled Matthew 5 verse 8 heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away Matthew 24 35 Mark 13 31 and Luke's gospel 21 verse 33 heaven and earth shall not shall pass away but my words shall not pass away on the metal of Christ coming again Jesus warns his disciples to be vigilant and to be alert all the time he says to them in Luke's gospel and take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life so that they come upon you unawares that they come upon you unawares because you were drunken because you were so overwhelmed by the cares of this world watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man dear friends it is easy to be absorbed with the cares of this life and to be absorbed in the reveling and indulging in the pleasures of this life and forget our spiritual mandate before God to be pilgrims and witnesses on this earth of the coming judgment dear friends do you know why the Lord has named this church the Blessed Hope Bible Presbyterian Church because we are a church that proclaims the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ our blessed hope the Bible tells us the trumpet shall sound the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive shall be caught up with the Lord in the air so shall we ever be with the Lord dear friends are you ready we are in the days leading to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as men would count slackness the Lord assured Moses that Israel will be delivered by his strong hand out of Egypt that God's judgment will surely come and men must repent repent of their sins today is the day of salvation now is the accepted time dear friends if you haven't repented of your sins I say to you repent today for a time will come no more when you cannot escape the judgment of God and therefore while the Lord gives us time let us repent the Lord assured Moses he speaks of himself as almighty he speaks of himself as a faithful father to his children verse 2 of our text says and God spake unto Moses and said unto him I am the Lord and if you were to count this text from verse 2 all the way up to verse 9 how many times the Lord says I am the Lord you count the Lord wants us to know who he is 
and what that name encompasses so that our hearts will be put at rest, strengthened in faith. And God spake unto Moses, verse 2, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob by the name of God, Almighty, El Shaddai, the Almighty God, the most powerful, unequal. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them? Jehovah, the capital L-O-R-D. You see in your King James Bible, the name of God, Jehovah, yod He vah He. What does it mean? Well, it speaks of a personal relationship that you have with God. That personal relationship that you have with God. The Almighty God is the one that you know, that you have acknowledged as your God. Are you privileged? Do you understand your privilege? Moses had to be reminded again who he is serving. And we have to be reminded again who we are serving. Do we serve a dead God? Like the dumb idols? We don't. We serve the living and true God. And therefore, what must be our demeanor, our disposition in the light of who we serve? So God said to him, But by, by my name, Jehovah, have I not known to them? I have established my covenant with them. I have made my promise with them. The word berith, covenant, a very strong word. The promise of God to his people. Sealed by blood, cannot be broken to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage. Dear friends, do you realize that one day, absent in the body, you'll be present with the Lord? Do you have this assurance in your heart? This is what the Word of God says to us the promise of God to us, so that whatever may happen to you in this life, absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. This is the assurance, the promise of God to us. I've established my covenant with them and to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I've also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Dear friends, when you are in trouble, when you feel that the roof is falling over your head, let us be reminded, the Lord says, I am the Lord your God, and I have remembered my covenant that you are the people of God. He will not leave you in the lurch. He reiterated his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He reminded Moses that he is known as the Almighty God. His exploits are well known to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob. You remember Abraham defeated five kings? The coalition, international coalition of kings. The most powerful group of kings in the region. The army with 318 men, he defeated them. Rescued Lord. The power of God. Do you see it? Can you understand it? Should we be cowed by what we see, what we hear? Let us not be the name Jehovah is the covenant name of God of Israel. And what was that promise? that he would give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage. And it's interesting that the Lord called the promised land a land of pilgrimage. It's a precursor to the promised land in the heavenly places for his people. Dear friends, the Lord wants us to know 
that this earth is not a place of our permanent sojourn, but a temporary sojourn, a temporal place, but there is a place of rest for His people here where they worship and they glorify His name. And that is what God is doing by sending Moses so that the people of Israel can be delivered from their bondage. And so the Lord reminded Moses that his deliverance is also an answer to the plea of Israel in bondage in Egypt. The groaning is because of their oppression. Life was miserable and cruel and most unbearable. Dear friends, do you think God does not know what you're going through now? Going from place to place, as it were, without a home? Does He not understand what you're going through? He's well aware of what you're going through. And that is why He reminded Moses, verse 6 of our text, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. You see the, emphasize, the emphasis again. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will reach you out of their bondage. I will redeem you. You see the, the phrase, I will? God says He will. He will help us. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. I will take you out to me for a people. I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, and I will give it you for an heritage. I am the Lord. Moses was God's messenger to his people. The people needed to understand that God will not fail them. His promises are yea and amen. Can Moses see? how the deliverance will come at this point, at this juncture? Can he see? He cannot see, except by the eyes of faith. He wants us to see by the eyes of faith. And how can you see with the eyes of faith, except you would renew yourself in the Word of God? Unless you are renewed, and the Spirit of God fills you, and to grant you faith, to take away all your fears, all your doubts. Our memory verse again, for all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Moses is going to see the glory of God. Israel will see the glory of God, but really does the people of God want to see all that will befall the land of Egypt? All the judgments that will come upon them? God will rain ten plagues, and the tenth plague will be most terrible. It will hit the firstborn of all Men and cattle, he said, wow, how does God know the firstborn of men? And even the firstborn of cattle will fall dead. At that hour, when they did not have the blood of the lamb to cover them, the Passover, the judgment of God that is coming, dear friends, let us realize and let the world see that we are meddling, meddle not with the living and true God. Let us not 
crumble under cruel bondage. Let us not crumble under persecution. Whatever oppression that may come upon you, the phrase, I am the Lord, repeated twice, and the phrase, I will, repeated seven times, providing Moses the information to settle his mind as to what God is doing and will do for them. Will your mind be settled? Dear friends, will you rest in the Lord? That's the trouble with us, isn't it? When we rest in the Lord, our soul will not be tossed to and fro. But when danger comes, we know that we can flee to Him, our refuge. We have that assurance. Moses needed to be assured of God's promises in his heart. He is to carry them to Israel. And notice the response of Israel in verse 9. And Moses spake unto, so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. Indeed, it is true. When we are suffering, when we are grieved in the heart, anguish in spirit, oftentimes our soul is so downtrodden, disappointed, discouraged, that we cannot see God. And so the response, they hearken not unto Moses. How can it be? Of course, if you see with the eyes of Pharaoh of the world, his might, his machine, the military machine, the people of God need to exercise faith in God during the time of their affliction. Dear friends, it is a test of your faith. And I pray that you would exercise faith. Exercise faith to trust in God so that all the doubts will just fizzle away. When God allowed Satan to test Job, to, he vouched for the integrity and good character of Job. He said that Job was a perfect and upright man, one who feared God and eschewed evil. The Lord said to Satan in Job 1 verse 8, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and hates evil, and escheweth evil? We are established in our faith during our trials when we choose to follow and trust him amidst pain and anguish. Amidst pain and anguish. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. 6 to 9, 1 Peter chapter 1. What do you do during the time of your trial? Peter says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through many four temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though ye now see him not, yet believing. Moses has not seen how the Red Sea will part, how the blood of the Lamb will distinguish them from the people in Israel, and yet he is told to exercise faith. Whom having not seen, ye loved. Whom though ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You rejoice 
with joy unspeakable, full of glory. What is this glory? The glory of God manifesting himself in your soul during the time of your deepest affliction. Are you experiencing it? Why did he let you go through the affliction? He let you go through the affliction so that you would experience that unspeakable joy in your soul that is full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. The time of depression. With the discouraged servant of God, is always a time of promise. The Lord pledges himself, F.B. Mayer says, with a sevenfold guarantee. God says, I will, I will, I will. How many times do you need to be assured that God is with you? Verse 10, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go speak in, go in, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he lets the children of Israel go out of his land. And Moses speak before the Lord, saying, Behold, the children of Israel have not hearkened unto me. How then shall Pharaoh hear me, who am of uncircumcised lips? And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. God commanded Moses to return to Pharaoh and not be intimidated by his refusal. Dear friends, are you intimidated? Are you frightened? The Lord says to us, let us not be. Moses feels himself most inadequate to fulfill the task. And indeed, it is so by ourselves, by our own strength, we will fail. But the Lord once again reassure him again and again that he is with him. It is the same for Joshua after Moses died, as we conclude. God has to assure him his presence and also to receive the repeated encouragement that God would give him, be strong and of a good courage. The Lord said to him in the chapter 1 of Joshua, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Reassurance of God's promises, verse 1 to 9. Renewing of faith for service. Verse 10 to 13. May God grant His people strength to keep serving Him, for the conflict might be great, but the battle is of the Lord. He will see you through, and we will have the victory as we obey His voice to do His will. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy holy word. Strengthen Thy people. Lord, we are dealing with principalities and powers in high places. 
O God, I pray that Thou would be gracious to help Thy people to be strong in the Lord, in the power of Thy might. O God, strengthen Thy people that we may not be taken in by the wiles of the devil, frightened. Father, may Thou work the work of faith to undergird the hearts of Thy people for Thy own mercy's sake, for Thy own name's sake. Help Thy people. This I ask and pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.